I'm gonna talk about uh, a couple of sections in the manual tonight um, for our uh, candidates. Uh, a lot of this will be new to you. I know if you have gone through the manual, you've noticed that there are a lot of terms that are used that are repeated uh, various times throughout the manual. You will find that we have these terms in order to make sure that one, we have a common language among us as judges so that as you move from show to show, whether it be a local, a district or a national show, the people who are, you are judging with um, all understand the same things when you talk in these terms. Um, it also uh, provides uh, that we are ob objective about our judging as well. Um, we want to make sure that we honor the work of our exhibitors. They have spent a lot of time on, and frankly, a lot of money in taking care of their roses, um, bringing them to the show, uh, many of them traveling hours to get to a show, uh, the hours they spend in preparing the exhibits and staging them. And so we as judges, um, to be objective, to have a standard way of judging and to really um, make sure that we are doing our best for our exhibitors. So I'm gonna start out with the common terms. I'm gonna follow up with the prime elements of judging, which are more common terms. For those of you who are experienced judges, please stay awake. I will try to get through this um, as uh, quickly as possible. But for our candidates, uh, really, it, it may seem like we say the same things over and over again. Um, and this is to help you through the exam and through the practical, because as you are going through your practical, um, the person who will be administering your practical will also want to see and hear you use these terms. And as you go through your apprentice judging, your proctor judges who will be working with you will ask you questions and they will want to hear you respond with these terms. So let's go. There we go. So um, they're used in the, the common terms are used in the guidelines and in rose show schedules. So if you think that the last time you will hear these phrases or in your practical exam or after after you've taken your exam or after you finish your apprenticeship, you, you, that's not correct. Um, you will see them used in rose show schedules. It's important to understand them. It's a common vocabulary. It is uh, our language, if you will, our language as judges. And the common terms are addressed in chapter three, common phrases defined of the guidelines and rules of judging roses, which all of you candidates should have a copy of. Um, you should be studying and have them marked up, have little post-it notes in, where you have your little notes in. I've been there. So there we go. Okay. There we go. So we're going to start out with um, um, once three of the primary common terms. Um, you're going to hear these repeated again. I'm going to talk about it a little bit in my second talk. Linda's gonna talk about them in her talk. You're gonna hear them in the other talks being done on Saturday and next Wednesday, right? These are important terms. So if you're a candidate, know these three. Exhibition form. Exhibition form means classic hybrid tea form. The blooms are one half to three fourths open, have petals symmetrically arranged, and an attractive circular outline tending to a high center. 
This form may occur in many rose types, not only hybrid teas. Um, you will see this form in miniatures, mini floras, grandifloras, and occasionally in floribundas. However, when we talk exhibition form, think hybrid tea form. Exhibition stage. Exhibition, exhibition stage is the stage at which a bloom is at its most perfect phase of possible beauty. That phrase is bolded and highlighted. Um, uh, for a reason, and we will get to that. You will see that phrase again shortly. Exhibition stage can depend on the number of petals a bloom has. Varieties with fewer petals are most beautiful when they are uh, one third open. Um, those with many petals are most beautiful when they are one half to three quarters open. The bloom should be gracefully shaped with petals symmetrically arranged, symmetrically arranged in an attractive circular outline tending to a high center. And for single blooms, semi dumbbell blooms, exhibition stage is the stage at which the bloom is open, yet still fresh with bright, fresh stamens. And the petals should lie uniformly, usually flat, and evenly spaced. An exhibition bloom. Exhibition bloom is a one bloom per stem specimen where the rose is at exhibition stage, typically but not, necessar but not necessarily without side buds. And it refers to roses from any classification. So we have exhibition form, exhibition stage, exhibition bloom. Diane, my head is spinning. Here's a picture of an exhibition bloom that is at exhibition stage, and it is an exhibition form. Okay, this is a hybrid tea. This is what we would expect for an exhibition form of a hybrid tea. A grandiflora, a mini flora, or a miniature. This is a rose that's an exhibition bloom at exhibition stage. But as you can see, this bloom is why blue blonder, it does not have exhibition form. And it does not have exhibition form. It would not be judged to that standard. Okay. Linda's gonna talk a little bit more about that in her discussion as well. So if your head isn't spinning enough now, um, we'll continue on uh, with the discussion of exhibition form, exhibition bloom, and exhibition stage. But those are three concepts for the candidates to understand the difference and to be able to define each of them very well. Okay. What other common terms do we have? Oh, here's that most perfect phase of possible beauty. Um, this refers to the exhibition stage. And it can refer to any exhibition bloom. Okay. The most perfect phase of possible beauty is subjective, as beauty is often in the eyes of the judges. However, we do have some judging standards that uh, we will talk about going forward and you'll hear about in uh, the upcoming sessions and the upcoming classes. Okay. Will you hear somebody say most perfect phase of possible beauty? Uh, yes, you will. Okay. And you will hear this not only in your apprenticeship, but we often discuss um, as judges um, when we are reviewing a specimen uh, whether or not 
uh, we believe a specimen is at its most perfect phase. Typical of the variety. Um, and this is often heard uh, when comparing uh, the manual says two different varieties, but also uh, when comparing uh, uh, varieties, if you have more than one variety, one more than one specimen of a variety uh, in your show, in your classes. Okay, it includes the color, form, size, foliage, and other characteristics of the variety, and it can be important in identifying a specimen. Um, you may come to a show and you may have uh, five specimens of something that's labeled as veteran's honor. Uh, four of those specimens look like veteran's honor, look like the veteran's honor that you've seen in the past, um, looks like veteran's honor that is in your yard. But one of the specimens might be much lighter than the others. And you may think, well, is that really a veteran's honor? Is it perhaps a sport? Is it just a, a different growing conditions in that exhibitor's yard? So you will discuss whether or not a specimen you're looking at, an exhibition bloom that you're looking at is actually typical of that variety and actually meets um, what is, typically thought of as being a bloom of that variety. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't penalize a fault, even if it's typical. Um, there are some varieties that uh, may have a, a street guard petal, or it may have a, a split center, um, which typically uh, we would penalize. But uh, if it's something that is typically of the variety, but it tends to be distracting, we may still apply a penalization. And it's based on the degree of impairment. Okay. Um, we'll reward specimens that exhibit superior quality. Um, we look for characteristics that are typical of the variety. If they are um, typically uh, a variety that has uh, frilly petals, for example. Um, we're going to look for those frills. If we see a specimen of a variety, uh, let's say something like uh, uh, Just Joey, which usually has uh, a ruffled or frill frilly edges to the petals. If the specimen does not have those edges, uh, we might penalize it because um, it's missing that characteristic of that variety. And knowing what is typical, and some cases we say indicative of the variety in the manual, it's typical of the variety. Um, it's a goal that every judge should try to attain. attain. Set, sta set standard of perfections. Um, my next section, I'm going to talk about the six prime elements of judging. Um, the six prime elements uh, tell us how to determine the set standard of perfection for an exhibition bloom or an exhibit. Judges set the mental set standard of perfection based on their experience. And as you uh, judge, as you go to various gardens, as you go to various shows, as you even clerk various shows, um, you become more and more familiar with varieties and you get to see different specimens um, and different growing conditions uh, and different uh, places throughout the country even, how a variety grows and you familiarize yourself with those and uh, you put that into your, uh, your little uh, mental safe of uh, varieties, uh, your, 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 your little file, not the circular file, but your little file of uh, varieties so that when you see one and you, know, you pull it out and say, oh yes, um, that looks uh, better than the one that I've se I saw you know, last year, or boy, that's the best one I've seen yet. You, know, you file those away. 
and each rose is judged by how close it comes to that set standard of perfection. Degree of impairment. Um, this is how we define uh, the severity of faults in any of the six prime elements. Uh, the prime elements are form, color, substance, stem and foliage, balance and proportion and size. We'll talk about that in a little bit, all of those six in a little bit. Um, if the penalty, um, uh, it's the, the penalty assessed for a fault in any of the judging elements and how much of a fault distracts from the beauty of the exhibit that will determine the degree of impairment and also the degree and the amount of penalization uh, that will be applied. Okay. So here we go back to your set standard of perfection in comparison, in comparison to the exhibit that you're currently looking at um, that may play a role in how you decide to apply a fault, how much uh, a fault distracts from the overall beauty of the specimen. Large rows. Okay, this one's easy. It refers to a specimen of a variety that is not classified as either a miniature or a mini flora. Okay, everybody should ace that one if it's on the exam. Okay, all other things being equal. It's uh, used when trying to make a decision when which of two roses is better. Um, this is where a, a mental point scoring can come into play. And you're we judge usually in pairs or in trios um, so that um, you're not there making a decision alone. Uh, when you're in your judging teams, um, you, you should all be coming to about the, the same decision on uh, how and how much penalization there is for an exhibit. Um, and now you, you get to points and it happens all of the time where you're judging two specimens and you just can't decide. You, two people on your team, three people on your team can't come to a consensus consensus on which one is better. Uh, sometimes you may end up calling over another judge to help you make a decision. Uh, the chair of judges may come over uh, to help break the gridlock. Um, but all, all other things being equal, um, then it comes down to, you know, really small things in order to decide uh, which specimen uh, is better. You have to grow them to know them. Okay, Diane, I, I, I have a small yard. I have, you know, 20 roses. I, I don't, you know, I've seen the handbook for judging roses. I've, you know, gone into modern roses online. I've I've seen all the rose catalogs. I, I, I don't grow all of those roses. I haven't seen half of them. I can't spell half of them. How am I supposed to know all of these roses? And I, I walked into my rose show and somebody had a rose I'd never seen before. How am I supposed to know them? Well, first of all, you're at the rose show. So if you've seen something that you've never seen before, this is a, a good way to get to know them. Um, take a photo while you're there, um, understand a little bit about the growing habit. Uh, if after judging, you get to find out who the exhibitor is, go and talk to the exhibitor, ask them uh, a, about the, the uh, variety and um, how the variety grows. Okay. Go out to um, uh, local rose gardens and go see or what's there, municipal, private gardens. You know, I'm, I'm very fortunate. Um, I, in a couple of weeks, I get to go visit uh, Bill Kazemchek and his garden. And I walk around and I point things and say, where did you get that? <laughs> and how come I've never seen it before? Okay. 
Um, go to different row shows. If you're not judging a show, go clerk a show. If you're not clerking a show, just go see the show. Okay. This is how you get to know all of these varieties. Um, even online, the ARS Photography Awards, um, that, that's on YouTube. Go to YouTube. Go see the exhibits from the photography classes. There are a lot of varieties that are displayed there. And all of them are shown in the as mostly exhibition blooms, um, the um, single specimen classes, and the hybrid tea and many and many floric classes are um, primarily exhibition form. So you get to know the variety and what they look like okay, and what we expect when we see them in a show. And this specimen is overgrown. Uh, what does that mean? Well, you know, we know some of our growers are, you know, fantastic um, in culture in their own yards. Uh, they do a wonderful job uh, with their exhibits. Um, some varieties, they grow large with good culture. Uh, some have characteristically large foliage. But then again, you may find an exhibit that has, you know, overly huge foliage and overly large stems. Okay. You have to decide whether or not this is typical of the variety or it's just been, you know, over fertilized or it just happens that the culture of that particular garden, that everything is oversized. You may assess the penalization uh, for balance and proportion, and maybe for stem and foliage. Um, but there is no, nothing in the six prime elements that says anything about overgrown. Okay. So you have to decide whether or not it's so grossly large that it distracts from the beauty and if it should be penalized according to the degree of impairment against once of one of the six prime elements. And I think that's the last of the first section. All right, now everybody's termed out. I have six more for you. Okay, session two, the prime elements of judging for our candidates. Um, this is a critical section for you to learn. You need to learn what the prime elements are and the basics of the point scoring for each of the prime elements, um, what they mean and how they're applied. So here we go. They're defined in chapter six of the guidelines and rules for judging roses. Um, your job is to identify and qualify, quantify the degree to which, ro to, to which every rose specimen approaches perfection. So the fundamental qualities, the prime elements um, determine the approach and how you determine perfection for a specimen. Okay. Uh, these are the elements of the point scoring system. You will hear us talk about point scoring in um, just about all of the other uh, sections, uh, except ethics and updates. And uh, yeah, uh, that's it. All, all of the other sections, we will talk about point scoring in one way or another. Um, and we talk about penalization. Uh, it's incurred when an exhibit has faults in any of these elements. Could be one, could be more. Um, it, it, specimen can be awarded a ribbon even if it has faults. Okay. And points are deducted according to the, agree, to the degree of impairment. 
I'm going to talk about this at the end, but the way we approach a specimen is we approach it assuming that it has 100 points. And then we deduct points for false. Okay. So you're going to approach it as if it's perfect. And then you take off faults for impairments, points uh, due to the amount of impairment, the amount and degree of impairment. And I'll circle back on that. And Linda's going to talk about that a little bit as well in her talk. So here we are, the six elements, form, color, substance, size, stem and foliage, balance and proportion, 100 points. Form, 25. Color, 20. Substance, 15. Size, 10. Stem and foliage, 20. Balance and proportion, 10. Candidates, know these six, know these points. Form, it's the most important. It's the structure of the bloom. Uh, the four elements are shape, the configuration arrangements of the petals, degree of openness, and symmetry. Here's that term exhibition form again. When you see it, know that exhibition form means high point at center, petals unfurling in a symmetrical spiral form, one bloom per stem, hybrid teas, grand floor, miniature, mini floras. These are, excuse me, um, these are the classes where we expect exhibition form um, in, in, the, in, the, um, in the exhibition uh, sections of the show schedule. And there will be other sections of the show schedule for, um, for example, uh, open bloom. Uh, that's a, a, an entirely different thing, right? right? And the definition of open bloom will be in your show schedule. Open bloom usually means that um, it's uh, fresh, uh, but with stamens showing and the stamens are fresh as well. Um, that is exhibition stage for an open bloom. I hear heads exploding. It's okay. It's okay. Um, decorative or informant form is anything that's not exhibition. Okay. And we can evaluate um, hybrid teas, granite floors, many, many floors that typically have decorative form. Um, they can be judged in their own merit. They will usually not outpoint those uh, varieties that have exhibition form. And uh, per all of our guidelines, a single is defined as four to eight petals. You can see my uh, little pictures on the left-hand side there. Uh, the one on the top is exhibition form. And the one at the bottom is not exhibition form. Okay. Color. Color has three elements, hue. It's the property of light and the gradation of color. Chroma, the purity of a hue, a degree of saturation, and freedom from white or gray, unless they're supposed to be white or gray, of course. Brightness, clearness of the color. It should not be cloudy, dark, or muddy. You know, brightness is evenness of hue, consistency throughout the bloom. Several different elements can impact color, weather, general growing conditions, um, cultural habits, refrigeration. We know our exhibitors uh, tend to uh, refrigerate a bloom in order to keep them. Um, there are various ways in order to protect the blue blooms from uh, the impact of refrigerators, especially if they are not uh, florist type refrigerators. Um, judges should be aware of the normal, typical color range 
of a variety. Here we go, typical of the variety again. Um, is the color that we're seeing, is that typical of a variety? If we are seeing any color faults, such as white or green streaks, those need to be evaluated. Are they typical of the variety? Petal damage, uh, like a little nibble from our little friends outside, spray damage, dirt, fungus, fungus, um, uh, even uh, sort of mechanical damage if you happen to bend a petal while uh, trying to arrange the exhibit or it gets jostled while it's on the judging table, um, that's considered a color fault. Substance, it's the amount of moisture and starch in the petals, just like a, a, a starch shirt. Is it crisp? Um, does it have good texture? Does it have crispness? Does it have firmness? It has to do with literally the freshness of the bloom. If it has a dull color, if it has a crepe paper look, if it looks crinkly or wilting, dry or crispy, these are substance issues. Uh, again, for open bloom classes, stamens should be fresh. And loss of substance affects color. So if you're going to deduct points for substance, you should also deduct points for color. Size, the dimensions of the bloom. Judges should be familiar with the typical size of a variety. In general, larger than typical blooms should be rewarded, smaller than typical blooms should be penalized, and a good larger bloom should prepare, prevail over a good smaller bloom of the same variety. And uh, sprays consider the total size of the spray and the size of the florets. Stem and foliage is the only one of the six elements that does not involve the bloom. Does not. The stem should be straight. The prickles should be intact. Um, I know when uh, every once in a while I will run into uh, a newish exhibitor who has decided that uh, stripping the prickles is um, uh, the optimal thing. And of course, as we're judging, we're only judging everything that's above the lip of the container uh, of the holder of the tube of the vase. Um, but still, um, you can, it's really distracting if uh, prickles are not there um, where they should be. Okay. The stem should be substantial enough to support the bloom and the foliage too thick or too thin can distract from the overall appearance. Clean leaves intact, and there, there must be leaves. There should be leaves, okay? Unless we're talking uh, in a bowl or in a picture frame or in a box, there should be leaves. Okay. And the foliage should be symmetrical. Um, I took my judging school from um, the late um, Nancy Reddington who um, was very good about showing us all aspects of looking at a bloom. Now, when a bloom is on a table, it's, it's kind of difficult to see it from the top down. Um, however, you can um, not touch the bloom itself, but um, you can either um, take it so you can look of it, uh, above it and look down um, you can ask a clerk to sit it down on the floor if need be, uh, or you can ask the chair of judges um, if a table could be lowered um, so that you could look at the overall exhibit from the top. And if you look at an exhibit from the top down, not only should the bloom form be symmetrical, but the arrangement of the leaves around the stem preferably should also be symmetrical. Okay. 
the foliage should frame the bloom. Okay. And it should hold up the in entire exhibit. Uh, stem on stem and side growth are reasons for penalization, uh, depending on the level of distraction. And of course, no foreign sub substances are allowed. No leaf shines, shines, no dyes, no added leaves. Now we have to be careful here because some varieties um, are have naturally oily foliage. And when our exhibitors go to shine their leaves, um, the leaves will come out, the foliage will come out extremely shiny. Um, so you have to know the difference between a leaf that is just uh, naturally shiny versus one to which uh, leaf shine has been applied. Balance and proportion um, combines the sizes of the blooms and stem and foliage into a aesthetically pleasing exhibit. Um, stem length here is critical. If you have a small bloom and a long stem, um, that is not good proportion. That is not good balance to the overall exhibit. Um, there's no set value for either element. Um, a rule of thumb is to have stem length six times uh, the size of the bloom, the height of the bloom. Um, but there's no substitutes for experience with a given variety. Sometimes you'll see a large bloom with no stem. That's point deduction. Okay, that's an impairment. Okay. All right, point totals. If you um, look at our points, 70% uh, of the score is represented by the bloom. And if you take half of balance and proportion and attribute that to the bloom as well, then that means 75% of your total score should be in the bloom. Okay. Well, your total score is 100. Now, for our candidates, we don't write the number of points down on the tags. We don't give you a little piece of paper and have you give a point score and turn that in. However, when you are working with your mentor proctor judges, well, first of all, when you're doing your practical, um, you will be asked to point score, to give an actual point score, okay? So you'll have to do that for your practical exam. Second of all, when you are with your mentor proctor judges, um, when you are doing your apprentice assignments, uh, your proctor may ask you to give them a point score. And they're doing that not to be mean, okay, maybe, maybe to be a little mean, but they're doing that to see if you are on the same reference point as the rest of the judges on your judges judging team. Okay. We want to make sure that everybody has the same view and can come to a consensus, have the same reference point when you're looking at an exhibit. When you get to be an experienced judge and you're working um, with judges from you know, different areas, you know, if you're working with judges in your local area, you're familiar with them, you've judged with them a lot, um, you kind of know what their tendencies tendencies are, but you know, if you understand um, the six prime elements and you understand the point scoring, you can go to any show and work with any judging team and you should all come to the same points of reference. You should all be in the same general area as far as the amount of impairments are concerned. Okay. 
And you will get to the point where you can walk up to a specimen and know right away um, where it lies on, on the scale. Okay. You know, I, Diane mentioned that I've, I've judged local and district and national shows. I've judged, um, I have the honor of judging several national shows and several district shows that are not in my district. Um, I was, um, you know, and, and we all come to it now with the same uh, point of view. Okay. It usually gets difficult when, when an exhibit is really good, right? And you're trying to decide of the, the best one of a variety and you get two or three that are really excellent exhibits. That's when it gets really hard. Um, again, you start your evaluation with the maximum of 100 points, and you take your deductions based on the degree of penalization against each of the prime elements. You don't start at zero and add up. You start at 100 and you deduct. Okay. Chair judges might request a formal point score if no agreement can be reached. I, I've never been, I've never done this. Um, but um, it is possible to happen. And uh, if you're going to tell your mentor judge that a specimen rates 100, that, that means that specimen is the most perfect in every way. You will never see another one like that, any perfect again. And they will look to you and shake their heads and say, you know, very nice, but, you know, um, we still think it's a great exhibit, um, but, you know, perfection is very difficult uh, in, in our arena. The goal here, though, is to be consistent and uh, to be objective uh, when we're judging our exhibits. All right, Diane's going to stop talking now. Thank you very much. Uh, good luck to our candidates. And I'm gonna turn this over to Gary to turn it over to Linda. Thank you all very much. President Summers will now give us a brief bio on Linda Clark. Uh, thank you, thank you, um, Diane, uh, for a great summary of those chapters. I know you, you, you mentioned that, gee, you know, hopefully our judges can stay awake. I will tell you that uh, I found it very informative, and many of us uh, really um, take the practice to heart of reviewing the guidelines every year before our show ski season starts, right? So this is really a great overview for everyone, and um, it just it, it's a good practice to get into just so that you're all set to go. I know those shows are starting soon, and some already have. So again, Diane, thank you so very much for your review. Uh, next, we have Linda Clark, uh, who's going to be speaking uh, for us. Linda is the District Director for the Pacific Southwest, and uh, most recently, she was Chair of the National Rose Show in Shreveport, Louisiana, um, last year, about this time. She is not only a horticulture judge, she's an arrangement judge, and she's a consulting rosarian. And she's been a member of the American Rose Society for over 20 years. Um, Linda uh, volunteered and has really helped us as we've reviewed the guidelines and we've made some edits to the guidelines that I referenced earlier. And again, I thank her for volunteering her time in many ways to support the American Rose Society. So with that, I'll just turn this over to Linda. Ooh, let's see. Thank you. Now, I don't know how, I'm <laughs> sorry, <laughs> okay, go ahead, and click on your PowerPoint, Linda. I know, now I can't find it, oh my gosh, I just, it's, oh no, it's, it's right there, now I have a black, <laughs> so sorry, it was right there, now I have just all this, Black on my whole computer. Oh, well, go to click to exit or hit escape. Okay. Where's, oh gosh, you're going to kill me. 
Why don't I have that? Click anywhere on the screen. Okay, got it. And a click exit. Okay, okay. There you are. I'll go <laughs> from the okay. start. I remember play from start. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Oh gosh. Okay. Well, thank you. And Diane, thank you for doing all that. I, this is so weird for me. Um, I apologize uh, in advance for uh, my craziness. But anyway, all right, do that. So I am charged with helping you understand judging hybrid teas, one bloom per stem, just like Diane said, hybrid teas, mini floras, minis, and grand floras. I will Get judged in that certain way. Um, you're going to see this a ton. This is the set standard of perfection, six prime elements, just like Diane went through. This is like your mantra, you know, just keep seeing it over and over and over again. This is exactly how judging works. Every judge is different. I would love to say we're all the same, but we all have this kind of thing in our head. Um, but we'll all, we'll all embrace that a little differently because I look at the set standard of perfection and everybody's set standard of perfection is going to be slightly different. Um, I see a lot of perfect blooms, but I also can see faults, but I try to see as many perfect specimens as I can. Let's see. One of the things you have to um, make sure that we do when we're judging roses in single bloom stems is that we have to make sure that the names are correct because a misnamed or an unnamed variety is disqualified. Now, if one of the things that I do when I first um, go to the area of judging is I check all of the Right. I check all of the specimens and make sure that their name fits their the look because now we can move one if somebody put in let's say a Shirley a Sheila's perfume in a hybrid tea because it has a hybrid tea form we just move it to the Floribunda class so it's kind of nice that they're not disqualified anymore um, if they're correctly named, but if they're misnamed or unnamed, you do have to disqualify them. So you just push them towards the back of the um, of the table so that you don't get uh, distracted by them when you're judging all of the um, different things. Um, they're shown with a common name. There, you can find it in Modern Roses and the CRL if you need to do some checking on that. Otherwise naming is pretty self-explanatory. Um, Diane mentioned stem on stem. It used to be a disqualification for the hybrid teas, but it is no longer a disqualification. It can be penalized if it's overly distracting, like a curved stem or a disbudding scar or things like that. Um, but the idea here is to get as close to perfection as we can, and sometimes um, blooms don't grow on long stems like we'd like, so that you can improve the balance and proportion so you can get more of those points by having a stem. And oftentimes we can't really, we don't notice that because the foliage hides that, and so it shouldn't be penalized. God, this is so weird. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Disbudding, um, it's not a means for disqualification anymore. You can actually have buds on um, there. It's looking at if buds are infringing upon the symmetrical circular outline, then it may be cause for a lowered point. Like if it impairs one of the edges, it, it um, comes into the symmetrical circle, you'd want to um, maybe take a point or two off because it would not be considered perfection. That would be, dis but it's never, um, never disqualified anymore. 
Okay, again, point scoring. This is where we are. <laughs> it's uh, your mantra. You just say it over and over and over again. Exhibition form is classic hybrid, hybrid T form with a high pointed center. All of the things, hue, chroma, saturation, everything that Diane mentioned, you just kind of keep saying it over and over again. You have this hundred point like um, idea in your head. Um, and that's kind of where, what we're what we're working for. Um, one of the things that um, in most shows that you're going to um, come across, you're, they're going to be arranged in alphabetical order where each variety is placed with like varieties. Your job will be to peruse the field, looking at all the specimens, and then using the points allotted and the set standard of perfection that's in your head, decide your first, second, third, etc. for each variety. All of the blue ribbons will then be grouped together for queen balloting, and you will use the same standard of perfection to choose the queen of all the blues. Talk about a difficult task. Many of these roses will be very close to perfect, and you have to pick the right one. I always, I actually have, I can't see a camera, I can't see anything, so I have no idea what you're seeing, except that these are some, this is called Jill Grace, if you can see this, I don't even know. And these are um, hybrid teas. Again, the, the circular form, the spiral, the high pointed center. It has a color fault on one of the leaves. I thought I'd show you because as I was looking at these, Jill Grace is one of those varieties that has a color fault. And if the color fault is distracting, it, you, can, you do penalize a color fault. If it's not distracting, sometimes the petals unfold enough. If it's not distracting, you don't have to penalize it. But it is it, it, a color fault. Is a, it can be a penalization. Anyway, point scoring. Linda, if you want us to see those, you have to turn on your camera. Okay. Um, that we would see you and your beautiful yeah. roses. I, I saw them before, guys. They were beautiful. Okay. Um, <laughs> otherwise, what we're seeing is your camera. Is that? I mean, I looked at the thing. Oh, this is the camera. Maybe it didn't look like. Okay, good. That's what I was hoping for. Okay, now. Okay. So yeah. So these. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go here. Yeah. So these are Jewel Grace. And you can see that this is a color fault. It has a white strip in the bottom and this one over here. But anyway, this is a symmetrical. <laughs> Thanks, Diane. I feel so stupid. Um, anyway, high pointed center. These are, that's what you're looking for. Um, anyway, thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh. No. Okay, now, now it's just, okay, so now I have to, in order for me to advance my screen, I have to kind of turn that off again. Because it doesn't now. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. Go so hit escape. What? Go back to sharing. OK. <laughs> Let's see. Go here. OK. <laughs> there you oh, go. Gosh. This is perfect. Now we have um, both you and your beautiful flowers, at least I do, and I have your PowerPoint. So. Okay, and now I can't advance my PowerPoint. <laughs> okay, wait. Um, Space bar again, I believe. I know, I'm doing that, and it just, just stopped. Oh, God, I hate this. I, yeah, I, I'm not getting it. I don't know what to do. Let's see. Um, sorry. Okay. okay. An arrow, maybe? Okay, let's try that. No, no arrow. It's all just like doing, I don't know why. I like Diane's screen because her mine just takes the whole thing and I can't see anything else. And hers just didn't seem to do that. So, um, um, I would Gary drive. <laughs> what? Yeah, I'm sorry. That's I'll all right. Go, stop, like, uh, let's see. Stop sharing your screen. Uh, stop your uh, video. Okay. 
now stop my video. Let's see if I can do it that way. Yep. And then do this. And then, yeah, still not doing it. Why? Hit. Okay. Um, stop showing screen. I'll do that and see if I can get back to it. Okay. I'll bring back your uh, PowerPoint back up and scroll to the next slide you'd like to show. Sorry, we can hear, I hope. And now this is the next one. We're talking about exhibition form, IRT form. Uh, share your screen again, please. Okay. Okay, try that. There you go. Okay. This, I gotta have next time. I want you to help me figure out how I can do a reduced thing so I can still see these things. Just anyway, whatever. Yeah. Sorry about that. So for those, um, just I want to say if, for those of you who have not had the wonderful opportunity to present at our webinar series, um, uh, it, it is quite a challenge at first. So I mean, what Linda's you know experiencing is is hard when you're not used to it, and so. Uh, we're, you know, you're among Rose friends, Linda, so nothing to worry about. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I, it is crazy. I just don't know how to do it, but all right, we'll just, um, we'll see. Okay. Um, we'll try. So this is exhibition form. Um, again, it's got the same thing. It's what you have the hundred point in your head about. It is the circular outline with the high point in center. Um, and it's all of these, and it's what you see at every show. It is what gets a blue ribbon, and that is exhibition form. Hybrid tees, minis, mini floras, all judged the same way. So let's see, I can still do that. I don't know why it's not advancing. Oh, I'll do it with my mouse, there we are. Okay, the next one is exhibition stage. Again, it's the degree of openness. Any bloom can share exhibition stage. Not all blooms will share exhibition form. Varieties with fewer petals are, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> varieties with fewer petals are most beautiful when one third are open. Those with many petals are usually most beautiful when after three quarters. And again, like Diane said before, open blooms and single petal, uh, single petals, four to eight petals, uh, have uh, exhibition stage all their own. Okay. Decorative form. Our new guidelines um, actually make this a feature that you can actually have a ARS for doing that. Decorative form can get blue ribbons. They cannot get queen of show because they do not, of course, have the exposition hybrid T form that you are looking for when you are judging for queens and mini floras, pennies, and hybrid tees, and grand floras. So decorative form, and you're probably not going to be able to see this again. Let's see. I don't know if you can see me or not. Um, this is decorative form. Can you see this, Diane? No? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Yes, yes, we can. You've got your camera on, so we can see you oh, and you're on your good. family as well. <laughs> decorative form. I don't have a decorative form um, hybrid tea like Crazy Love or Rouge Royale or anything like that, but this is the decorative form um, Marietta, which is the classic mini decorative form, and then this one is Jackie Williams, which is a lot like Magic Carousel. Again, we'll have more of a cup form, more of a flatter appearance, um, and not the high point in center. They're very still very symmetrical, still outlined, but that's really what a decorative form is. This one happens to be South Africa, the one on the screen, and South Africa often doesn't have um, it uh, has decorative form as well. Let's see, there we are. 
one more. Come on, come on. I just, <laughs> sorry, this is like so crazy. Um, tools, your, your slower schedule uh, helps when you have um, issues or questions. I hope that you have already per perused your schedule before you actually get to the judging day. And that way you'll know what what rules they are going and what classes they offer. I also hope that you have perused it so that you can maybe bring some blooms to share as a judge um, so that you can do both of those things. Okay, and that's it for me. I don't have to do this anymore. Stop the screen. All right, thank you, Diane Wilkerson and Linda Clark for a great uh, classes. Uh, your classes were well received. We now have, Diane Wilkerson has submitted five questions for a poll. So we're going to do the five polls. First four appear to be true or false. So I'll bring them up and you guys will click on it. The fifth one appears to be a multiple choice question. So I'm going to start launching each of the polls and you please go on and vote. The first one is the most perfect phase of possible beauty is always exhibition form. So that's been launched. Answer true or false. All right, we have 79% of you in attendance that have voted. We'd like to get the rest of you to vote, please. I think that's pretty good, Gary. Yeah, we got 86% of you who voted. Mm -hmm. Diane, um, oops. 57% say false, 43% say true. And the tr answer is? The answer is false. The most perfect phase refers to exhibition stage. All right. And this is when it's key to understand the difference between exhibition form exhibition stage and exhibition bloom. All right, the next one that I'm about to launch is a Floribunda specimen is considered a large rose. Voting is now open, go ahead, vote please.
All right, I showed 79% voted, 76% said true, 24% said false. And the correct answer is? The correct answer is true. Large rose refers to a specimen of a variety that is not classified as either a miniature or mini flora. So Floribunda would be considered a large rose. All right, so the next poll is, size is the most important of the six prime elements of judging. Poll is open, go ahead, vote please. All right, we have 78% of the attendees voted, 99% say false, 2% say true. And the answer is? This one was too easy. It is <laughs> false. Form is the most important of the six elements. All right, the next poll is a tr uh, true or false also. The maximum number of points that can be awarded to a specimen is 100. In the polls launch, go ahead and vote, please. All right, we had 81% of the attendees voted, 98% say true, 2% say false, and the correct answer is? I have to think of more difficult questions next time. Uh, <laughs> again, uh, too easy, this one is also true. Very good, folks. All right, I believe the next poll is multiple choice. Which one of these is not one of the six primary elements of judging? And I have launched it. Poll, go ahead and vote, please. All right, 83% of the attendees voted and it was 100% for fragrance. <laughs> Everyone passes, yay. It hey. is fragrance. <laughs> All right, uh, folks, we are now going to go into a discussion session. So if you wanna talk about something or ask a question, raise your hand, I will unmute you. You will need to unmute yourself and then go do the discussion. So, Andrew, Domenico, you've been unmuted. Go ahead and unmute yourself so you can speak. speak. Uh,
I'm going to try to become a judge. <laughs> so anyway, I'm, my question is, are we going to be able to see these? Will they be up on the website? I'll go ahead and answer that. Uh, it The uh, webinars will be on the ARS website and the ARS YouTube channel. Beautiful. Thank you. And thank right, you for you your time. Hand down and I'll mute you. Satish, go ahead. I've got you. Yes, yes, sir. I have two comments to make. I have two comments to make. The first one is on uh, Linda's presentation where she said, someone's STEM is no longer a disqualification. In making these entries a lot more exhibitor friendly, this step was taken, I believe, and I know the background of it. A lot of beginners sometimes would have STEM and STEM specimens and they would be automatically disqualified. So that's to, why are you shaking your head? On my, I didn't, I said it could be penalized, not disqualified. If I misspoke, I apologize. Oh, okay. So you, you said in the next part, you said, so people tend to show the specimen stem on stem so they can recoup or gather those points for balance and proportion by increasing the stem length. Do you remember saying that? No. Sorry. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah, I do. I do. I, I said, yeah, they can show with stem and stem so that it can improve their balance and proportion. You're absolutely yes. right. But yes, it's but, not a disqualification. No, but the it's reason why it was done, no longer penalty or whatever it is, is to not to discourage a new exhibitor. But if you do that to gain the points on balance and proportion, you're definitely losing major points on stem and foliage. Therefore, it won't really be a queen or anything like that. It's merely to not discourage new exhibitors from showing their roses at all. It's okay. going to be a panel. It's going to be a penalization so because it's wanted to distracts from the my... exhibit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Satish. Oh, it, it's okay. yeah. It's it's correct. Yeah, it, it is and it is not. Uh, uh, go ahead, Satish. It it it's a penalization. And about the about maybe the question. It may be just as yeah. little as one point or two points. It may, it's not a drastic. Yeah, yeah, it can be. It can be though. Well, um, okay. if if, if I see if I see a hybrid tea, and and this and it's and it's stem on stem and it's above the lip, I. I that's that's a that's a major penalization in my eyes. I, I will talk right. to my my point is you lose more points in penalization than gaining in balance and proportion. Mm -hmm. And going back to the earlier question about will this presentation be on the website? You know, everybody can download the guidelines for judges and everything that's presented is from that guidelines from for judging roses and it's all that. So I would encourage them to download the guidelines for judging roses and study them instead of just looking at the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. You're absolutely right. Uh, our, our apprentices certainly should download um, the guidelines. And, and in fact, anyone who's interested right, in exhibiting, you don't even have to be a judge or an apprentice, can certainly download and review how judges judge specimens. But I want to get back to this whole concept of the de of the degree of distraction. Um, it, I could see where stem on stem may not, you know, be uh, a huge point. Just you know, take a lot of points away. It really you really have to look at the exhibit, right, um, right. to understand. You know, um, so it's not meant to say that we're gonna um, not DQ you but we're gonna penalize you so much that you can't get a ribbon, right? That's not what this is about, right? So um, it really depends on the degree of distraction. All right, moving on. Uh, Melissa Bader, uh, your hands up. Go ahead, unmute and begin your discussion. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys, but uh, Diane and Linda, thank you so much um, for what you're doing here. It's absolutely awesome. I, I This is a much more general question, so it's kind of, let's go kind of meta on this. Um, my concern a little bit is, has anybody, an audience here, looked for a Randy Scott Rose or a Louise Estes or a Mr. Caleb? These top exhibition roses are increasingly very, very difficult to find. And so I'm with the Greater Atlanta Rose Society. I've been focusing on modernization of our rose societies. We are in a unique position to get thousands and thousands of visitors to our rose shows. So we encounter our new enthusiastic rose growing population and their number one thing is fragrance and, and they have a decorative, et cetera. So I, I just curious, like as these roses are like, I can name nursery after nursery where they're aging out, they're in their mid eighties, they're yeah. increasingly less, like, what do you guys recommend? I know we have the standard, but these roses that are classically embody this are increasingly rare to the average grower. If you are, you know, a, uh, Pratish or you're a Cindy Dale, you, you will have these roses or have access, but to most of, you know, this younger growers, they don't have access to these. And I just would love to get your guys' reflection on how do we move this forward and make this accessible when there is a lack of availability of these true you know, exhibition roses. And I, I, I know this is a very meta question, but I'm also like, this is like, we need to keep this alive and we're all very passionate about it. And so, you know, what do we do to kind of open this up to our 50 and under audience that also is equally passionate? There are vendors for them. The question is knowing where to get them and who to get them from. In some cases, they are primarily available directly from the hybridizer themselves. Um, in other cases, they are no longer in commerce and they have to just be traded and passed around, uh, you know, on, among the exhibitor core. Um, it is um, in some ways difficult, but it's, it's not impossible. Um, there are vendors out there who are still selling exhibition uh, quality roses. Um, uh, the Wisconsin Roses, k and um, But again, we may need to go to the vendors um, uh, like John Smith uh, directly um, to obtain those varieties. And it's, you know, go to the exhibitors and say, hey, you have that new rose, where did you get it? Um, um, the two other um, uh, recommendations. One, I recommend, um, that someone in the society uh, get a, a copy of the Yearly Horizon Roses. Suzanne Horn is now the editor of that publication. It uh, talks about the newest exhibition varieties. Um, the reviewers there are listed. And if you want to know where they received a certain rose, um, I'm sure you can contact Suzanne is on tonight. You could contact Suzanne and say, hey, I saw this rose mentioned in Horizon. Do you know where I can get it? Do you know where I can get in touch with the person who reviewed it? I'm interested in getting a, 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 that variety. Um, and um, my brain just went uh, blank on the, other, on the other source I was thinking about, um, but it'll come to me. Um, but um, uh, there are uh, exhibitors forums online uh, too. There's uh, uh, one on Facebook and um, there's one on the ARS. Um, the ARS website now has a forum and you can ask there. Yeah, great ideas. I can tell Linda is chomping at the bit to say something. <laughs> Sorry, one of the things that I did as a newer exhibitor um, was to try to break into something that wasn't the hybrid teeth uh, at first. And then you start getting your feet wet 
in figuring out other things. And then pretty soon you get to network and figure that out. We were just lucky enough to have it that our Pacific District show, Stiletto, won the queen of show, which is a Jackson and Perkins rose that's available now to quite a bit of the country. We also had a uh, queen of the show at our show was, was um, Ring of Fire, which is one of those very uh, uh, prevalent um, hybrid teas out now. So I don't think that we have to have the old one necessarily, but I do think we can branch into the exhibition type thing in maybe a different arena until we get used to and figuring out how we can get that. Because Diane said, there's lots of places that we can actually get it, but it's just, you have to kind of start networking and our new people aren't quite ready to network yet. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, Melissa, go ahead, put your hand down. Ah, speaking of Suzanne Horn. <laughs> oops, come on. Suzanne, um, you need to go ahead. I just wanted to respond to uh, what Diane said about uh, New Horizon roses and where to find the roses listed. There is a code in back of each rose on the far side, and uh, it'll tell you where you can get them. And there's, if you didn't know what the code meant, there's a reference to it at the bottom. So, so you know, if it's K&M or wherever it's available, it will tell you where to get it. Thanks, Suzanne. You're welcome. All right. All right. Uh, Tony Franz, you have your hand up. I've unmuted you. Go ahead, unmute yourself and begin. And I just have a question. I'm a candidate. And so I just have a question on the point system. Uh, just using form for an example, uh, you know, that's 25 points, but what, what, how do you determine whether or not you take off one point, two points, three points, 10 points? What are, what are the factors involved in doing all that? Or, you know, how do you determine that? So it is um, the degree of impairment. So if you look at the specification for form, for example, um, start with uh, at the shape. Um, Linda, Linda shows her beautiful roses there. So, you know, you're gonna look at the shape. Is it circular? Cir I can't, you know, Philadelphia accent, it's late. The Philadelphia accent is coming out. Um, circular, um, the arrangement of the petals is the arrangement of the petals um, symmetrical? Um, is there like one wonky petal kind of just kind of off to the side where the rest of them are laying nicely in symmetry and the degree of openness? Um, also, when you look at it, um, is it a, a consistent look? Like if you, you look at the, um, the guard petals or the, the first uh, round of petals at the bottom, is there one kind of hanging down um, as opposed to um, uh, being up and laying at about a 90 degree angle as the rest of them? Um, Linda, if you wanna uh, give some examples of the one that, ones in your hand. Linda, you're on mute, I think. I am on mute, but I was just like showing you because the even spacing between the petals coming from the high pointed center, spiraling around with even spacing, not gaps. And that's like a fault if you had to. Um, and again, yes. it's that holding that hundred point perfection in your head and going, how close to perfection is this rose? And if you, if that is a perfect rose, then it gets all the points for form. Most of the time, there's something that there's a, a scratch on it, or there's, you know, most of the time there's some imperfection. So you just take one or two points off in that arena. But, um, you know, sometimes there's a lot. Sometimes it's not symmetrical because look at that one. I mean, it doesn't have, it's not open enough. You'd have to pull this one, you'd have to make it. So that one would have more points off. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but it once you kind of work with it, it figures, you kind of figure it out. 
So does one so does one impairment count for one point? Are you guys using like you know if you've got like a pedal hanging down or the spacing is isn't right? Maybe is it isn't like one point per impairment? Then is that how you're looking at it? I don't think you can be that specific. Yeah. I, okay. I think yeah. I mean <laughs> once you like looking at I, I think I would advise you to look at a lot of roses. And you just just to start looking. I'm like, how close to perfect is this? And if it's close to perfect, you're only going to take a few points off. If it's not close to perfect, it's coming down a little bit further than that. So, I mean, once you start looking at all the kinds of roses, I think you'll figure out if you want to take one or two points. Different judges take off different amounts, but they t hopefully, I, I know some people are harder on it. Some people are closer. Most of the roses are close to perfection. Like I really look for perfection and I want most of my roses to come as close to that as you can. Um, but different judges are different. And I still think they would pick the same, maybe pick the same queen. Yeah. I work with a lot of judges. We don't pick the same queen. We're all different. Um, we have, even though you want to think we have a set standard of perfection, it's not always that case that easy but we strive to um make it as fair as you can and make it as consistent like diane said it's consistent yeah. as we can so that your judging is always consistent versus each person's judging is always the same whether it matches melds exactly i don't think it will but my judging is consistent diane's judging is consistent and your judging will be consistent yeah yeah. The basis is, is that is that we come to agree that we can agree, um, it, it, like Linda said, consistently. Like when Linda and I both look at a, a an exhibition bloom now, um, we'll come to an agreement um, on whether or not that's a blue ribbon or not. And if you're, cons this is Diane Summers, if you're consistent in how you deduct points, then you will come to the same answer as Diane and Linda here, even though I might have decided overall this is a 93 and Linda might decide it's a 95 and, you know, um, Diane, she could say it's a 96, but we would all come to say, um, it's a blue or it's the best of all of these. So as long as we are consistent in how we individually apply those standards, um, generally you come to the same answer, but as Linda said, not always, and that's okay. Yeah. All right, Claudia, Kobe, Hawthorne, if you have your hand up, I've unmuted you. Go ahead, unmute and discuss. My question is, I'm in a state and I'm bordering Ontario, Canada. We are into the no spray for 10 years and more and more chemicals are being illegal. Are we gonna still look at foliage the same way with the American public saying it's time to go organic? I, I grow several varieties, not hybrid teas though. Um, I'm in New Jersey, I'm in central New Jersey. I have. Uh, a river a tenth of a mile away from me and I'm five miles inland from the Atlantic Ocean. It is um, black spot Hades here. Um, I grow several varieties that are uh, no spray. I do spray my hybrid teas, but I don't spray these um, that have clean fo foliage. Uh, one is a blushing knockout and two of them are from Cordis. The, uh, from the fairy tale series from Cordis. Um, so as uh, hybridizers move toward um, more disease resistant roses and we can find more disease resistant varieties um, for our growing areas, um, we as judges um, will look at that and, um, and decide um, whether or not they are still meeting the standard. And we have several growers in the Penn Jersey district who grow organically and are still able to uh, do well in row shows. Now, depending on how much of a distraction um, we may uh, 
see a, a, a spot or two here or there, um, but they are still able to grow um, uh, roses that are, are entered in, and are blue ribbon winners in rose shows. Hybrid teas are hard though, uh, at, at least in my in our area in New Jersey. Uh, hybrid teas it's, are hard to grow uh, organically. It's the same in New York State, but I border mm -hmm. on Ontario, and basically they haven't done it for 10 years. And so yeah. we are hearing this push from Washington. I'm also in the Federated Garden Clubs and an environmentalist through there with this no spray organic approach. And so my question is should I continue to want to? just do garden roses because expedition roses are going to be out of the question if we um, discount my roses because I, I absolutely use no sprays on anything. I'm not going to discount your roses. You can, I, I there are, like I, like I said, we have uh, many, and, and Linda mentioned, um, you know, starting out or even continuing to show, you don't have to show hybrid teas or grandifloras. Um, there are more classes in our West Jersey Rose Show that's coming up in a few weeks that are not hybrid teas than are. They have floribundas, we have um, modern shrubs, classic shrubs, uh, uh, polyanthus. Three, base, yeah. you know, like uh, even growing a hybrid tea in a vase of three, could win a trophy and it may not win a queen completely. So it's it's learning if you like to play the game, it's learning how to play the game. And um, what if you are a no spray person, that's fine. You just may not be able to win queen show, but there's always that time that you will have a perfect flow. I mean, it, it, it's just, it, it's still out there. Oh, I know it's still out there. I won, I won seven ribbons last year without using one spray, without using one spray. See? But the bottom line of it is, is that I'm with a group that basically they, the queen of show will always be the hybrid tea and the hybrid teas. I mean, I do Pope John Paul II intentionally because I found it is the most disease restricted and hybrid tea I've ever seen. But beyond that, I'm finding out that I, I did not realize until I got into this sh show, learning about shows. I'm a David Austin English style garden here. And that will never be a hybrid. That will never be queen of show. And that's just that's the way it is. That's correct. Although there are um, awards, there's um, medals and awards for modern shrub. Yeah, we have a shrub queen in ours. Yeah. So it just won't be a hybrid tea queen. <laughs> Not hob yeah. Right. Right. Thank you, ladies. It's just a question because I am an environmentalist through the Federated Garden Clubs, and I'm going on the master level on that. So it's kind of a it's a it's a catch twenty two since I'm openly they all look I I don't spray they they all look at me I don't spray anything, and if I have to take off leaves I take off leaves right away because I'm I'm looking for the flower. Yeah. And and I just want to add too, there are some societies who have a, a best in show. And in many cases, that best in show ends up not being the queen of show. It ends up being uh, uh, usually a, a, what I've seen is a modern shrub spray or a floribunda spray. So There's there really are awards, yeah. there are awards available. There's a place for every rose in a rose show. Um, and I think that the ARS has continued to try to expand that to make sure that all of our roses have an opportunity. Uh, and we have an opportunity to show our roses in a rose show because that's what interests um, people, right? Are the variety of roses. And as we talk about the um, changes that are going on in the guidelines, you're going to see that especially as it comes to some of the more decorative forms where we do want to give the option uh, to really enter and um, those classes um, or enter those roses in specific classes. Right. Rebecca Shaw, you have your hand up. I've unmuted you. Go ahead, unmute yourself and begin your discussion, please. Hmm. Oh, 
Uh, moving on. Uh, let's see. Justin Williams Ruth, I see you have your hand up. I have muted, unmuted you. Go ahead, unmute yourself and begin. Hello. Now that we have the official introduction of um, decorative form blooms, what is the best way for newer judges that may not be so familiar with all of the roses out there to ensure that they're judging properly and not just judging one of those exhibition form hybrid teas that doesn't necessarily live up to its intended potential? How do this we goes, this goes back to make uh, to being familiar with the varieties. And I, I know it's difficult, like I said, to know um, all however many thousands of varieties there are out there. Um, I, I don't, and we don't expect every judge to be familiar with every rose. There are um, and a few of us out there who know uh, a lot of them, um, but we don't know all. Um, so it is, um, that's why we have judging in teams and uh, pairs or, or trios um, so that the collective uh, of the judging, except for challenge classes, which um, Dr. Prabhu is gonna talk about, um, you know, as you're doing your, your, your uh, exhibits and specimen judging, um, you're mostly judging in teams. And then there's where you can discuss and understand from other judges um, what typical of the variety is um, for that specimen and whether or not that variety is typically exhibition form or it's typically de decorative form. And again, that's why I, I, I uh, you know, I'd advise not only going to shows, going to botanical gardens, but also, you know, going online and uh, uh, looking at photographs of roses just so you can say, oh, I saw that a photograph of that one. I think I know what it looks like. Um, and if you're not sure, ask. You know, it's not um, once you get um, out into the judging uh, arena, uh, it's not, uh, uh, an individual type of judging thing and, until you get to uh, judging courts. Um, but you can talk to your other judges and say, hey, I've never seen this before. Is it supposed to be decorative? It's supposed to be exhibition form. And, um, you know, we're very helpful. We're very helpful folks. Thank you. Yeah. Paul Colombo. I've unmuted you. You have your hand up. Go ahead, unmute and begin. Hmm. Well, folks, it looks like this is going to be the end of today's school. Oh, wait a minute. Satish has got his hands up again. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll finish with Satish. Yes, sir. Um, the reason why I have my hand up is I wanted to give a little bit of suggestion and help to that person who asked the question about how do you decide how many points you're going to take off form. It's very, very easy. The form has a few elements. First one is the circular outline, as Linda was trying to point out repeatedly. If when you look from the top, if it is a squarish rose, it might lose one or two points. If it is rectangular and very wide, it might lose a good three or four points. Looking from the side, if it is not a high raised center, you might lose a few points. If it looks very, very flat, you might lose five points. A pointed center, if it is not that, I deduct immediately 10 points because it's very important. And then the fourth element of form is a uniform unfurling. If the, uh, if the petals are a little bit crowded at one place or not uniformly unfurling, I'd lose another couple of points for that. So that's a good starting point. And as we work with other judges, the senior ones, experienced ones and very old ones like me, you'll get more and more experience. And then you come to a consensus with all the rest of the judges. All right. Thanks. Well, that's the end.